Part 6. The Harvest. Chapter 54. Atreides awakened to someone calling his name. He thought he imagined it. Sitting up, he realized he was in the woods. His tunic was drenched with the night dew, the stars still bright against the darkened sky. What was he doing out here? He remembered leaving the longhouse, wanting to get away from the noise, needing to think. He vaguely remembered Anomia. He felt unclean, and niggling worry ate at him. Atreides! He didn't feel like talking to anyone. With the voice was so urgent, he roused himself. Atreides, where are you? Oh, my cow, he said, grimacing. Haragast appeared. He was out of breath from running. You've got to come with me. Gundred and the thing have had your wife taken from the Grubin house. What are you talking about? Atreides said, shaken by a wave of nausea. Taken her where? To the sacred grove for trial. Anomia said she's been with other men. The fog left Atreides' mind and his head snapped up. He'd warned Rizpa never to speak of her past, for he knew the cost if it ever became known. What did you say? Anomia said you told her your wife had been with other men before you. He swore softly and tried to get up. His blood went cold as he sat down hard again. Julia! He remembered rambling bitterly about Julia. Are you listening to me? Haragas said, grabbing the front of his tunic and shaking him. They're going to kill her unless you tell them Anomia's lying. I will never lie. Rizpa's words haunted him again. He knew she would tell the truth, even if her life was forfeit. Oh, God, Atreides said under his breath. Oh, Jesus, what have I done? He jerked free of Haragast and ran. As he did, he tried to remember what he had said, how much he had told Anomia that could be used against Rizpa. Enough to get her killed. When he reached the gathering, he pushed his way through the warriors to get to the inner circle. Rizpa stood in the center, hands bound. Don't say any of them, he told her. Don't answer any of their questions. Anomia stepped forward quickly, pointing at him. Keep him away from her. She's cast a spell on him and can make him say anything. Hands fell upon him. Let go of me. He struggled as they dragged him back. You don't have to answer the accusations, Rizka. Say nothing. Pain lanced his heart at the look of sorrow in her eyes. He had betrayed her. With his own lips, he had poured out the words that would be used against her. Atreides told me himself she bewitched him. Anomia called out to the gathering, her eyes glittering as she looked at him. You're the witch! She relished the anguish and rage she saw in Atreides' face, gloating openly. Let him suffer for his indifference toward her. He said the child isn't even hers! Rizpa is his mother! You told me yourself the mother's name was Julia! You told me this woman took your child! Don't listen to her! Atreides fought against those holding him. Others helped, forcing him to his knees. And you said she cast a spell upon the child, so he wouldn't take milk from anyone but her. Rizpa looked at him, and he wanted to die. I did write his word against yours, Rolf said, stunning every warrior present as he entered the circle. Betrayer! Anomia cried out at him, eyes blazing. You dare question me, a high priestess of Tewas? I dare, he said. I dare even more. He pointed at her while addressing the others in a loud voice. Anomia is the one who sent me to kill the Roman. She has a heart for murder. Don't listen to her. Atreides uttered a loud cry and tried to fight free of the men holding him. I didn't send you. Tiwa sent you. She felt Gundred's look and turned on him. The lot was cast upon the white cloth, and the honor fell to Rolf. The Roman was a deceiver. His fear of her made him acquiesce, obliterating that small threat. The Roman spared my life, Rolf cried out to all. In order to fool us into believing he came in peace, Anomia said disdainfully. He came to weaken us, to make us believe in his God who said to forget trespasses done against us. Should we forget what Rome has done to us? Should we forget those who have died, those who have been taken as slaves, those who have been left crippled? She looked from face to face, knowing those who are most vulnerable, driving her words into their hearts. The Roman came to make us turn away from Tiwaz, she cried out. Turn from Tiwaz and be destroyed. Is it any wonder Tiwaz called for the Roman's execution? Tiwaz said the truth about him. She thrust out her hand. As Tiwaz knows the truth about this woman, she is unclean. She is a black-eyed witch. Atreides told me himself. He said she was with another man before him, perhaps more than one. He said she had another child by another man, and that child died. He said Roman women cast their children upon the rocks. Some of the men shouted, Harlot! Kill her! She's lying! Atreides cried out, fighting with all his strength and gaining nothing. 
Freja pressed her way forward, striving for inward calm as she raised her hands and beseeched all for quiet. You must have proof, Anomia. There is no proof, Atreides groaned out as loudly as he could. It's her word against mine. See how the Ionian has bewitched him, the men shouted. Gundred raised his arms high in the air. But the Freja wants proof. I will give you proof of other crimes the woman has committed while here among us, he said in his orator's voice. She practices cannibalism, a crime worthy of death. She eats the rejuvenating flesh and drinks the blood of this Jesus Christ whom she serves, and through witchcraft she has drawn Atreides into this abominable practice. Kill her! No! I heard the Romans say they were eating the flesh and drinking the blood of a man named Jesus, Gundred cried out, having crept close and spied upon them when they were unaware. The evil must be cut out from among us, Anomia cried out. She saw her time had come. You already all have the evidence you need. Do you remember the first day the Roman and this woman came to us? They spoke our language by the power of the demons. That is enough to seal her fate. We don't need proof that she stole a newborn baby in order to capture the father. We don't need proof that she slept with other men. We know these things to be true. Have you not seen the pull she already has upon our children? Ask Giuseppe about Luisa, who goes to her each time she appears. Ask others how our little ones went into the forest to hear the Romans sing to them. Will you let her live so she can steal your children, too? No. She's an enemy of Diwaz. Freja could not believe the things she heard, would not believe. Let her speak in her own defense, she pleaded. By our law, she has the right. She will cast a spell upon us as well, Anomia said in consternation. She must be destroyed before she destroys us. Let her speak, Rolf shouted. Or are you afraid she has more power than you? Aragas joined him. Let her answer the charges. Filled with wrath, Anomia looked upon the ones who had turned from her. She saw others doubting. She would make them sorry. She would make them pay. Let her speak. Atreides tried to lunge free. No! Hearing what was in his voice, Anomia turned to him in veiled surprise. His fear was like a drug in her system, rousing her senses, making her mind buzz. Atreides didn't want the woman to speak. Why? Turning, she studied Rispa. At first, all she saw was a beautiful young woman, her enemy, standing before her. Then she saw more. She saw her quiet humility, her dignity, her integrity, and she knew why Atreides wanted her to say nothing. Anomia raised her hands for silence. Perhaps we should ask her. Say nothing to them, Atreides said, struggling with every ounce of his strength. He gained nothing. Rizba! She looked back at him, face pale but serene, and he knew she would keep her word to him. No matter the cost, she'd said. And the cost would be her life. Rispa saw his grief and shame. I love you, Atreides, she said, and saw tears fill his eyes before he shut them. Anomia struck her across the face. Do not speak to him or look at him, witch! This is your hour, Anomia, the hour of darkness, Rispa said quietly and looked straight into her opaque blue eyes without fear. You think to frighten me, you or your imagined god? A day will come when every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Even you will bow down to him. Do you hear what she says? Anomia shouted with a mocking laugh, her gaze still fixed upon Rispa. She would have us on our knees. She would have the chatty, the greatest race on the earth, groveling before our crucified Savior. She turned to the others then, spreading her arms. How long would it take then before Rome kills every last one of you? Rispa bowed her head praying silently and fervently. Oh, God, you know my foolish heart and my every weakness. None of my wrongs are hidden from you, Father. Please, may Atreides and Rolf and all those who have heard your word and believe not be ashamed because of me. O oh, Lord God, may those among these people who seek you not be discouraged or dishonored through me tonight. What's your decision? Anomia cried out. Men shouted for her death, but some for pardon. Paragast entered the circle. Because the woman believes in another god doesn't make her a harlot. Warriors shouted more angrily, hearing one of their own speak on her behalf. You never forgave Atreides for commanding your son to be drowned in the bog for cowardice, Holt said. I have heard you speak often against him and his wife. Why do you now defend her? Another cried out. Because I heard the word of her god from the Roman, Paragast shouted back. And it took the hatred and the pain from my heart. And it took your strength as well. Anomia said contemptuously. 
Eonian has bewitched Aragast, as she bewitched Adrenus, Gundred said, and more men shouted. How many others has she bewitched? Anomia turned again to Rispa. Speak the truth, or may your own god strike you dead! Be strong and courageous, beloved. Rispa could almost hear Theophilus speaking again, and on the heels of that remembrance came the words of God. Do not be afraid or tremble at them, for the Lord your God is the one who goes before you. He will not fail you or forsake you. I will speak the truth, Rispa said loud enough for all to hear. Hear the word of the Lord. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. It is the Lord who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion, and who will satisfy your soul. Anomia screamed in rage, the words like hot coals upon her mind. It is the Lord who has made us. He is the good shepherd, and we are the sheep of his pastures. Speak no more. Gundred cried out in fear, looking to the skies. Darkening clouds swirled overhead, thickening. See how our words have angered Diwaz. It is the Lord God who have angered, Rispa cried out. She saw the night sky blackening, and was desperate for them to hear. Tiwaz holds no power over you, but what you give him. Turn away. Turn away from him before it's too late. Turn to the Lord. Don't listen to her. Stop your ears, Gundred commanded. Cry out to Tiwaz. Cry out. The warriors began the Veritas. The Lord made the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, Rispa cried out. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no God besides him, nor is there any rock like our God. Anomia hit her hard enough to drive her to her knees. A traitor lunged forward but was dragged back. Other hands fell upon him and he was forced down, face to the ground. Holt's knee was in his back. Others held his arms and legs. The Veritas rose louder, a battle cry against the Lord. Put your armor on, beloved. A traitor remembered Theophilus, saying, One man of God puts to flight a thousand, for the Lord your God is he who fights for you. God, he groaned, God, fight for her. Bound and helpless, he prayed, crying out with his heart to the Lord. Jesus, I have sinned. I deserve death, not her. I turned away. Your God, forgive me, I turned away. There is no one besides you. O oh Lord, my God, come between my wife and this multitude. O oh Lord, God, my God, forgive me. He wept. Jesus, Jesus. God, don't let her be destroyed because of my weak faith and foolishness. O oh Lord, let them not prevail against you. The clouds swirled, boiling over and blocking out the stars and the moon so that only the torches cast light upon the sacred grove. An ominous rumble rolled. Hear Tiwaz's voice! Anomia screamed, heart racing wildly. Repent! Rispa cried out sobbing in fear for them. In repentance and rest you will be saved, in quietness and trust. Turn your hearts to the Lord. Cry out to Tiwaz! Anomia screamed above the din. Let him hear your voices. Yes, yes, let him hear you. Tiwaz, Tiwaz! Warriors banged from Aeas against their shields. Lightning flashed, the jagged spear of hot light striking the sacred tree. The mighty oak cracked down the middle and fell, shaking the earth on which they stood. Flames shot up from its root. Men screamed, some fleeing the circle in terror, Gundred among them. Anomia remained, ranting at them. Call upon Tiwaz before he destroys you! Tiwaz! Tiwaz! Lightning flashed again, striking the altar this time and melting the golden horns. Rispa prostrated herself in holy terror. God, forgive them! Oh God, forgive them! She wept. Haragas fell to his face and clung to the earth. Only Rolf stood, arms spread wide, filled with elation. Justice belongs to the Lord. Silence them before they bring further wrath upon us, Anomia screamed, and those of her chosen council moved against them. She is the enemy. Our salvation depends on her death. No, Frasia cried out, staring up at the swirling heavens. Her God comes upon us. Don't touch her. She must die. No, others screamed. Anomia saw the terror in those who remained, and knew she had to use it. Better that one should die to save the many! Gracia was terrified. What if what she says about her god is true? You have betrayed Tiwaz with your lips. You have always betrayed him in your heart. I have seen. I know! Gracia drew back. Anomia dragged Rispa up from the ground by her hair. What if she's lied about everything else? Speak, witch! Here's a child of your body! Atreides dug his fingers into the earth and moaned. No, Rispa said. 
And his mother's name was Julia? Yes. Did Atreides take his son back from you? Yes. Did you have a child by another man? Yes. And that child is dead? Rispa closed her eyes. Yes. Oh, God. Atreides groaned softly. By her own lips, she has passed sentence upon herself, Anomia said, her fists tightening in Rispa's hair as she looked around at the circle of stunned faces. Tiwa struck the tree and the holy emblems because we are forsaking his law by letting her live. See how the heavens clear now and the stars shine again. Lord, you are my rock and my redeemer, Rispa murmured in complete surrender. Anomia pulled Rispa's head back further, exposing her pale throat. Atreides knows the law. He brought her here, for he knew in his heart that only we could set him free of the spell by which she's bound him and his son. Once she is dead, he'll be the man we used to know. He'll lead us to victory. Atreides raised his head, his eyes awash with tears. Kill my wife, and I swear before God, I'll lead you all to hell. No, Atreides, Rispa said in grief. No, beloved, remember the Lord. Remember what we've been taught. Feed the sheep, he wept. They're going to kill you because of me. God is with us. Whom shall we fear? I love you. I love you. Forgive me. He saw in her eyes. She already had. See the power she has over him, Anomia cried out. There is no deliverance for us if we let her live. Take her to the bog, Rudd shouted. And as chief, his words were heeded. The bog! Others agreed and told Rolf and Haragast's voices were drowned out in the din and confusion. Anomia's eyes gleamed with malicious delight as she looked down into Rispa's face. See the power I have over you, she hissed. You have no power but what God has given you. So even he heeds my voice, she mocked. She leaned closer. I thirst to rip out your throat with my own teeth, but they must do it. She released her and stepped back. She called forth Rudd to fulfill the law and the custom. Shave off her hair. Rudd took out his knife and proceeded to shave the left side of Rispa's head close to the scalp. On the right side, he cut the hair two inches in length letting the luxuriant dark locks fall to the ground around her. Rispa saw Freja weeping, clutching her amber amulet. Turn to the Lord, mother! Anomia struck her again, dazing her. Strip her and put the collar on! Rudge slit the back of Rispa's tunic and tore it from her. He took the heavy leather collar from Anomia's hand and put it around Rispa's neck, then dragged her roughly to her feet. The Lord will bring to light the truth if you but ask, Rispa said, using what time she had left. Christ died for your sins. He was buried and raised on the third day. Through one man, Adam, death came into the world. And through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we have life everlasting. Silence her, Anomia said, her eyes flashing with fury. Rudd struck Rispa a vicious blow and then shoved her in the direction of the bog. The others followed. Bring the traitors, Anomia called back to them. He must watch her die if the spell is to be broken. She looked into his eyes wanting him to know it was his suffering and not his redemption she sought. Hauled to his feet, Atreides was taken along. Others, concerned for Rolf and Haragast, brought them as well. Anomia led the gathering of chatty warriors by torchlight through the dense forest to the edge of the marshland. She felt an eerie change around her, as though the night air itself was charged with power. The hour of darkness was passing away. Dawn would be upon them soon. The deed must be done. She hurried her steps, urging the others on. Gray moss hung from the branches of ancient trees. The air smelled of decay. She came to the edge of the bog and turned, facing those who had followed her. Atreides wept openly, his eyes never straying from his wife's face. The priestess looked upon Rizpah with contempt. Atreides' woman, too, was broken, for her eyes were closed, her lips moving as though she had gone completely mad. By the power I have been given by Tiwaz, I proclaim this woman unchaste, a foul witch and deceiver and I passed a sentence of death upon her. Let her be cast into the bog. Rizpah raised her head and looked from face to face. My God, whom I serve, is able to deliver me from the pit. Warriors jeered. Deliver you? Anomia laughed. You are going to be sucked down into the bowels of the earth, never to be seen again. Stepping back, she spoke loudly to those gathered. Listen to me and obey. Her name is never to be spoken among the chatty again. Let it be as though she never walks the face of the earth. They cried out their assent. Atreides went to his knees, his lips moving as the Ionians had done. Anomia saw Rispa smile at him tenderly. Take her! Rudd grasped Rispa's arms. No, Rudd, Rispa said, looking into his weathered face. Let me go alone. 
Lest you die as well. His eyes flickered. Do you listen to her or me? Reg grip tightened. He pushed Rizpa out onto a wide plank, but as he came near the end, his feet slipped. Releasing her, he tried to save himself. Instead, he lost his balance, and they both fell. Throw him a rope! Holt shouted. Panic spread through the gathering as they saw their high chief in the bomb, flaying for a handhold. Hurry! He screamed. A rope snaked out to him, but he was already going under. Atreides shut his eyes tightly so he wouldn't have to watch his wife drowning with his friend. Lord Jesus, God of mercy, he moaned as men shouted. He heard Rudd choking and crying out for help. The men pulled and pulled and then fell back as the rope was released. Silence fell, and then another scream rent the air. A woman's scream. Look! Freja pointed, her face draining of all color. Look! Do you see? Restraining hands dropped from Atreides as chatty warriors cried out and fled or fell upon their faces in terror. Uttering a moaning wail, Anomia stared and still could not believe. And then fear, such as she had never known, filled her, and she ran wildly, disappearing into the shadows of the forest. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock, making my footsteps firm. Rispa kept walking until she was twenty feet beyond the place where Rudd had sunk into the bog, and there she stood, in the middle of the bog, as though on solid ground. Beside her was a man, tall and powerful, shimmering with radiant light. The sun rose brilliantly behind Rispa, and for an instant Atreides wondered if he had gone mad and was imagining what he thought he saw. Rispa! he cried out, throwing his hand up to shield his eyes from the brightness, unable to see her. Rispa! Then suddenly he saw her again. She was running toward him, the dazzling light still at her back. He met her at the edge of the bog and caught her in his arms, pulling her close, holding her tightly against him. He buried his face in the curve of her neck, his hands covering her shaven head, his legs buckling. She went to her knees with him. Shaking violently, eyes wide, Aragast stared out into the swamp. Sunlight streamed through the distant trees, almost blinding him. He realized he was shouting and crying and laughing all at the same time. The white light faded into softer colors of morning. Rolf rose from the ground where he had prostrated himself. The few who had remained rose with him. Most had run away. Atreides rose, drawing his life up with him. Jesus is Lord, he said, a joyous conviction ringing in his voice that hadn't been there before. The sound of it echoed through the forest, driving back the darkness. He is Lord of the heavens and the earth and all that is within it. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name, Aragast said, awed, heart still pounding. Trembling, Freja rose from the ground where she had prostrated herself. She fumbled with the amber talisman bearing the runes of Tiwaz, removing it from around her neck. With a soft cry, she flung the pendant far out into the bog and watched it sink quietly from her sight. The fear and despair that had so often held her captive melted away. Rolf waited, uncertain. Not until Atreides turned and looked at him would he know whether he lived or died. In either case, so be it. Atreides released Rizpa and turned. When he let his wife go and walked toward him, Rolf lowered his eyes, feeling the heavy purpose in each step that brought Atreides nearer. Forgive me, Atreides said. I'm a fool. Rolf's head came up. Tears filled his eyes. Less than I. Atreides gripped the younger man's shoulder. It seems to be the burning in all men. We must tell the others, Freysha said, face shining. But someone else had reached them first. Marta burst from the forest, thrusting Caleb and clothing in Rispa's arms. You must go! Take her quickly, Atreides, or they'll kill you too! Marta! Rispa said, reaching for her, but Marta shook her head, backing away. Shake the dust of this place from your feet and leave! Marta said, running away as the villagers appeared. Leave us! Men and women shouted hysterically. Take your foreign wife and God, and go from us before you bring further calamity! The Atlas possessions as well as their own were thrown at them. Go! No! Frasia cried out. The Lord Jesus Christ is the true God! She ran into the midst of them, searching for Barnas, for Usipi, for anyone who might listen. Aragast and Rolf ran in search of their wives. Our God will destroy us! Go away from here! Some picked up quads and stones to throw. Leave us! Leave us! Atreides pulled Rizpa back. I must go! We can't leave them! Grabbing up the gear, Atreides sheltered his wife and son as he urged them toward the forest east of the village. When Rizpa looked back, he caught hold of her hand and kept walking. Feed the sheep, the Alpha said said. 
but something more impelled Atreides onward and kept him from looking back again. At any place that does not receive you or listen to you, shake off the dust from the soles of your feet for a testimony against them. Rispa wept for the lost, and so did he, but they'd made their choice, just as Rod had the instant before he fell into the pit. Wait, someone called. Wait for us! Atreides stopped and looked back, his throat working as he saw Rolf running toward them, holding his wife by the hand. When they reached them, Rispa thanked God and embraced each of them in turn, while Atreides stood to one side, his gaze searching the forest for others, praying fervently more would follow. Are there others coming? I don't know, Rolf said, out of breath. I didn't wait. I didn't look back. Atreides led them on through the forest. 